Hello, and welcome back, YouTubers. I'm your host, Proto Mario, and today we're talking about why it matters. Today's episode is about not losing yourselves, not being despaired, discouraged, and understanding who and what you are and why you are. So, we have uh, a stack of games over here. And we have two games right here. Now, which game would you like to play? Requires Xbox Live because it also requires the internet. Single player is, well, virtually impossible in terms of doing the raid and end game content. Sometimes even strikes if you're not that good at the game. Single player doesn't require internet. Uh, it requires a TV though. See, that's where they get you, man. You need a TV and a Nintendo Switch. <sighs> Nintendo's really asking a lot of us microtransactions requires internet requires xbox life just to play the game in 10 to 20 years when the servers go offline will it still be there mm, probably not in 10 to 20 years if the chip still works and the console still works you can play it let's talk about what's happened to good old destiny 2 and why destiny 2 has become a pretty lackluster game overall basically what ended up happening is that each year destiny 2 has special events where like you know during holidays easter halloween christmas thanksgiving they do um, little things to where you can uh you know get special engrams special armor kind of acknowledge that things are going on in the real world and they're going on in the game too sweet so what ended up happening is that a massive rebellion came in the form of uh, the forums over on bungie.net that would be their website the company's website for this game where they have massive forums set up for people to interact with each other and uh they were saying remove eververse eververse is the microtransaction shop that allows you to buy mostly cosmetic items ships sparrows which would be the bikes of the game to get you around a little quicker other than on foot and then there's also the ability to buy some armor and stuff like that and um, in some cases, there are ornaments as well for weapons. It's nothing game-changing, but it still affects the gameplay itself. A lot of people got upset because, essentially, what ends up happening is that to get all the Eververse items in the game, the mathematical odds of you getting every single item can go all the way up to $10,000. Now, you might say to yourself, well, those are just... Those are just the odds of it. What uh, would I really have to spend ten thousand dollars to get everything? And would I really want everything? No, no, you wouldn't want everything. But then, at the end of the day, what if the one thing you want is going to end up costing you ten thousand dollars? Wouldn't that be really crappy? And that's Destiny 2 in a nutshell. Why everyone's hating on it? And you might say to yourself, "Well, can't you play the game without it?" Absolutely, you can play the game without it. But um, you don't have to play this game without that. And then here, here's the biggest issue that a lot of people have. This is a Bungie game. This is a Bungie game. And they did a lot of this stuff with Destiny 1. And a lot of people said, okay, this is the trial run of Destiny 1. Destiny 2 is going to come out. Things are going to change. They're going to fix a lot of the issues. And they sure did. They really did fix almost every single issue that Destiny 1 had. Except the problem is the game is literally the same thing with the fixes. Now, a lot of people will say, well, isn't that what you wanted out of Destiny 1? And I will say, no, no. A lot of people didn't want that from Destiny 1. I have no issue with Destiny 2, the game itself. A lot of people find it boring. I find it fun, interesting. I challenge myself consistently with it. I don't just try to go all out and be the most OP character. I do it in a lot of my games. From Pokemon to Doom, I set the difficulty levels as high as possible, and I use a challenging set of Pokemon. These are just examples of how I handicap myself in video games to make it more challenging, and I do the same thing here. But once again, that's not what people wanted out of Destiny 2. So this is a lesson to be learned from Bungie, because a lot of people look at Bungie and they say, what happened Bungie? You had some of the best first person games ever to be created. Some of the, this, this game collection right here alone pushed the Xbox brand to the point where it wasn't a console that phased out. 
and it was a sustainable console that created competition for both the PlayStation and the Nintendo. Do you know how difficult that is to do to create a franchise with that much staying potential and power? And you went from this to this to this. If this is better than this here, okay, two completely different games, not even in the same genre. Let's make a fair comparison. This, with all the glitches, all of the launch problems, and everything that has since then almost been completely fixed and patched out. This can be acquired for $20 and less. I've seen people get it for free with bundles. I've seen people get it for a few dollars used. Versus this, that's around $40. Yeah, you can find it for probably $20 if you're lucky enough. But, I mean, like, come on, dude. You get four games here. And these, these were made from Bungie when they weren't money-hungry, greedy, and including microtransactions that infuriate the fan base. Also provides a side effect that even though people who don't care about them leave the fan base they leave the game because they don't want to deal with that crap they just don't they don't endorse it they don't like it they don't want it in their games this is from the same company that produced halo war halo reach was the end game of theirs this is where you could see the beginnings of destiny start to come around this was kind of a filler game a lot of people didn't like that much halo um halo dst Pretty decent. It was a filler game between Halo Reach and Halo 3. Halo 3, one of the one of the best games. Look, I have I literally have two copies of this. I don't understand why, but I do. I'm sure I got them in a lot or something. But nevertheless, that's how much I love Halo 3. I have two copies of it. Halo 2, another game that would contest against Halo 3, but again, I think Halo 3 would take the cake. And then finally, the game that kicked it off, a remastered version here, Halo Anniversary. Remastered by 343 Industries once again. Bungie had no interest in going back and looking at this fine stack of games. They wanted to go off and create a whole new series. And I understand that. I don't blame them for that. They clearly wanted it to end with Halo 3, Halo Reach. But they decided to produce two more games. That was under the totalitarian grip of the ever seeing Microsoft Studios, the Xbox brand. And if you look into this, if you look deeply into the origins of Destiny 1, you'll understand that why it almost didn't even come out on the Xbox. Because Bungie was so sour with Microsoft that they didn't want to produce their next game for the Xbox. They had deals lined up to only do it for PlayStation 4, believe it or not. But these things change. These things change for various reasons. And they decided to publish it for the Xbox, and here we are with Destiny 2. And I'm sure that Activision had a role to play with that. If you look through the history of Destiny 2, you will also find a lot of court cases, a lot of problems between the founding members, the iconic sound artist, the one who is behind the wonderfully orchestrated music of Destiny itself, and all of the Halos, all of them up to that point. Marty O'Donnell, a very, very memorable man. These are the founding members of Bungie. The seventh column, as they put it, and they're gone. And this is the thing, man. This is why it matters. Because when you forget why you originally set out to play games, why you originally set out to develop games, why you wanted to make the game that you yourself wanted to play, that you thought millions of people would enjoy, and you, you decide, you know what? It's more important that our company hit a bottom line. It's more important that our company make money. It's more important that we incorporate these elements in. Nintendo don't have to answer to uh, shareholders about why they aren't putting microtransactions in Mario Brothers. Every customizable costume in this game can be acquired in-game through your own skill without having to spend money out of your wallet. Why is this? the exact opposite when this is more likely to be something that you would do that in versus this one 
I'm I'm in reverse world. I, I'm in I'm in mirror land. I I I I'm playing Mario Kart right now, and we're on the mirror courses because this is backwards. I don't even care about Eververse. I think everyone is overreacting to the Eververse situation. Nevertheless, because of that overreaction, the player install base is so negative on this now. They are so far gone that I don't think you can pull them back. Bungie would literally have to remove the entirety of Eververse and start incorporating every single thing the Eververse sells and drops within the game to get these people back. It's never going to happen! This is a sinking ship, and it's a sinking ship because they have people they have to answer to. They no longer have control and mainstay of every single thing they do because this is their publisher, developer, publisher. But even, even if all of that was gone, even if every bit of the microtransactions were gone, there are still points in the game where you're just walking around, you're traveling on your sparrow, and there's nothing to do. You look around, you fight the same recycled enemies over and over and over again. Their tactics are not even that great to, to go against you. I have to handicap myself to make it a difficult game. I have to handicap myself. If I want a challenge, I can play these games on Legendary. There's no way to do that. There's no way to do that. Why? Why is this rated M for Mature? And this is rated T for Teen if the graphics are so much better on this. What is different about this game? What is different about any of these games to where this is more mature content than this? It is a game that was developed to catch as many players as possible and keep those players and retain as much playtime as possible. And that, that is very sad. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm a massive, massive Halo fan. I have their games, you've seen it on the Xbox. I have a Halo Reach statue right over there. I've shown it in previous videos. I have Halo posters. I have the controller itself, the Halo Reach controller. I don't have the Xbox, so I went out of my way and I bought this Halo Reach controller. The old controller. I haven't used it in a long time. I play on the Xbox One now. You know, so it's pretty nice to be able to play these games in 1080p 60 FPS. Really awesome. But it's a real shame to see what is becoming of Destiny 2. And now, now, why it matters. Why it matters. Because when you lose yourself as a company and you sell yourself to a different publisher and you don't realize what exactly that means and what's going to happen to the company in the future and you start to forget why you started making the games that you made in the first place, you start to realize that, hey, you know what? It don't matter as long as we can make as much money as possible. It's almost like they forgot how... How, um, well, here's the perfect example right here. How to make a game to become a best-selling game and instead are supplementing these games with things like microtransactions that just never needed to be in them. Season passes, DLC, and other external things to buy for the game itself when all you needed was a, a, a platinum hit. How do you make a platinum hit? How did you make Halo 1, 2, and 3? And then you went on to make ODST and Reach and Halo Wars. These are some of the best games that were ever made. And this, this is what happened. With all that knowledge, this is what happened. So that's why it matters, ladies and gentlemen. When a company never forgets its vision, and another one does. You now see the difference. So that'll wrap it up for this episode of Why It Matters, ladies and gentlemen. I hope you enjoyed the episode. If you did, leave me a big thumbs up. Like and share this with everyone you know. If you didn't, leave me some constructive criticism. And just remember, I'm one of the biggest fans of Destiny, Halo, I love the series. 
I have so many hours put into both of these games, Destiny 1 and 2, and the Halo series, and yet, I am still upset at what has happened with the company. So don't think I'm crapping all over your favorite game or your favorite hobby, because I'm hurt myself at what has become of one of my favorite series of all time. So, uh, once again, thanks for watching. I'm almost healed up from my sickness. Uh, I'm going to go off and take a break, take a rest, edit this up, and then, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll probably be uh, back at it again tomorrow with another What You Missed News video or a different video of some other kind. So come back tomorrow and I'll, I'll see you then. You guys have a good day. Yeah, I've been Eros Pro Mario. I'm signing out, and uh, I'm going to get out of here before I lose my voice. See you guys uh, next time.